paddle. Bubble. Bubble. Paddle. Yeah, that's a great size parrot. No one knows about this. I'm a skeptical guy. I was like, no way this could possibly be legit. Someone tried to give me $10 million. I'm Elena and this is Riley. And this is our home, La Vagabond. <laughs> we've been sailing around the world for the last six years now. And recently, it's like we're seeing everything for the first time through a new set of eyes. This is our little boy, Lenny. Click the subscribe button to join our voyage every Monday. Welcome back to Isla do Fael. We're docked in the town of Horta. With no boat jobs to do, for now, we were free to do some fun stuff, starting this morning with a free dive slash spearfish. We have a pretty good day ahead of us. And please do hang out to hear about the time we got offered $10 million. This is no joke. What are we up to this morning, Frank? We are gonna go for a spearfish in the tender with Renton and Tom. I should, some people do their, when they get fresh water in the tender, they chuck their clothes in there and do some. Water. Really? Yeah. Wow. It's a great idea. Target species will be, I'll definitely be able to get a parrotfish. There's groper around, hey, but like, I, I just, I don't know what is, what you're allowed to shoot. Some Basically are, the some really, are. really big ones you're not allowed to. They're yeah, protected. definitely you can't get the massive black ones there in the middle. Um, but there's other ones that you can. I'm just not going to shoot any. Which is a shame because uh, everywhere else, that's what you're sort of going for. So I look at them and I'm like... <laughs> Amberjack there'll be. We saw some wahoo yesterday. I oh, mean, that would be pretty incredible. Maybe I'll take a flasher. <laughs> All right. What are you doing? We learned from Daniel, who took us diving with the tiger sharks, that you should always have your eyes on sharks. There's no tiger sharks here, but there are sharks. And I've been meaning to draw eyes on the back of my mask for a while now so that the shark thinks I'm looking at it, but I'm not. Will there ever be a boy born who can swim faster than a shark? No. Has there been any studies done on this? Yeah, I think they have, it like... It strikes me as a bit of an old wives' tale. If we know that when you look at a shark, it's less likely to bite you and it turns away, then I think it would reduce your chances for sure. And I think they've done some studies on it. But I'm not 100% on that. If anyone else knows. I'm pretty sure in Port Lincoln, they put a couple of blokes into a tuna pen and shooed a white shark in there, a great white. And they drew eyes on the back of one of their masks and not on the other. And the guy without them got eaten. How are you going to run an experiment? Like with buoys or like fake fake people with blood. What if they put like a fake dummy with eyes and blood and then one without Sharks eyes? Sharks are too smart for that. They can do that study. That's not very hard. I reckon they've done it. Let us know. Why am I putting eyes on the back of my mask? <laughs> is Indeed. it helpful? I think it is. If you're a shark expert, you let us know. Please. People worry all the time. People worry and they lose their minds. What are you really gonna do? Good boy. <laughs> we'll, we'll need a bucket as well. For swim? No, for, for fish. fish. You don't have my pole spear in there, do you? <laughs> nah, you don't need your pole spear. I, I don't want to use your big gun. I want my pole spear. Your mum doesn't know where her own pole spear is, honey. <laughs> We're just picking up Tom from his boat over here. That's Tom Lenny. Oh, nice. Oh, he's going to love that. Thanks. Yes. Thank from you. Amazing. When that shiny day is coming. This is a little vagabond flyer. I never do anything properly. You guys on holiday? Can you see it? What? Say what? Why? Really? <gasps> no way. Yeah. So 
we just did a drift dive over this shallow reef and um, because of the way the current is going, there's more sea life on that side. So we're going to motor over and do it again. Boom. Well, we'd had no luck with the pole spear just yet, but once this mobular ray showed up, we couldn't have cared less. <laughs> These rays can have wingspans of up to three metres wide. We'd heard about these rays and how they gather in large schools above the shallow seamounts here in the Azores archipelago. How amazing! Oh my god! That sounds so close to it. The Azores is actually one of only few locations where these rays gather in such large numbers. No one's sure why rays and other pelagic migratory species are attracted to the seamounts, but by them showing up each year at around the same time, it gives researchers a rare opportunity to study these creatures. This one was really playful. We were pretty lucky. Paddle. Bubble. Bubble. Paddle. Perfect. Yeah, that's a great sized parrot. It's really nice, isn't it? Yeah. I saw that and I was like, yep. Good ceviche. <laughs> we didn't bring a bucket though. Good boy. <laughs> we'll, we'll need a bucket as well. To swim? No, for, for fish. fish. Well, that's pretty small. I mean, it's better than nothing. Can I tell everyone what you did in the water back there? Bit of a poo. <laughs> Riley did a poo in the water and it's so clear and calm that it just hung around for ages and Tom's off diving over here, thank God. But we just decided to paddle away. I think he went off here to do the same. Yeah, probably. Lenny, Dad did poos. <laughs> <laughs> He's sore. <laughs> With the fish in the fridge to fillet later, we wanted to make the most of the rest of the daylight we had by exploring the island with our friends. Starting with the lighthouse of Ponta dos Queblinos. They finished the construction of the lighthouse in 1903 and it was really useful to navigators up until the 1950s when a volcano erupted underwater, bringing up a huge lump of land with it. An entirely new part grew onto the island. The island was evacuated as huge rocks were flying through the air and the sky was a huge layer of ash, and then there was the torrential rain. With the huge amounts of uncertainty that this event brought, the lighthouse ceased to operate after that. What do you think? I can't remember seeing anything like this. I think it was like this in the Canaries, but I can't really remember. But the fact that this just emerged 24 years ago. You'll have to explain that to me, because I don't know, or we'll Wikipedia it on the way home. I will. Jack's really excited because you can build boats out of it. Yeah, that's the, what were you talking about? Basalt. Yeah. Muy Good luck. Bring me home a nice fish. I'll try. And some wick. Jack, what do you want? And some good footage. Hogfish here. Mostly, I want the good footage. Riley's going spearfishing with Tom and another friend and um, it's Lenny's nap time so I'm going to stay home, put Lenny to bed, do a bit of work, put the laundry away and um, probably work on my book actually. It's been a work in progress, I thought it'd be way easier to write a book but yes, getting there. 
<laughs> I wouldn't say that Elena and I have made a huge amount of friends on our travels. Moving around a fair bit and a busy lifestyle does make that pretty difficult. So when we meet some people like recently Jan or Tom and Sophia, it really does mean something to us. Tom has been a professional paraglider since he was 18 and he's done a bunch of stuff for Red Bull. Had a rock climbing accident with the guys from Dodo's Delight, which is a doco that Elena and I love, but mainly he's just a really solid dude. Sophia and Elena got along amazingly well. She's one of those super mums that you read about in blogs. Um, and occasionally I just turn around and see them both just doubled over with laughter. It was really good to see. It had been a pretty incredible week. I'll put some links in the description below so that you can follow their adventures as well. Right, mate, where have you taken me? In the secret spot. <laughs> <laughs> be good to be in the water anyway, even if nothing, nothing appears. And we're at a, a pinnacle in between... In between Fayal and Pico. And it's a place where I think it goes from, what, 400 meters to, to 10 meters. You were saying that there, um, there were waves crashing on this spot when the hurricane was here. Yeah. That's uh, pretty crazy. That. Yeah. It was uh, red, it was all white here. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Actually, call the title of the video somewhat. It's like late at night, and he's pulled out the camera and he said, I'm gonna film. Babe, we set up the camera. Look where my head is. And do you wanna come across a bit? So I thought that we could call the title of the video Someone Tried to Give Me $10 million. Do you remember this? Yeah, it's happened like a few times. I know, but no one knows about this. Nah. I would think, see, Some if I was... Some wanted to give us like a lot of money. Oh, I know. And, and if I was out. our audience, I would be like, what the f***? Why haven't you told us about this? Oh, so yeah. this has happened more than once. I'm glad that this was what you wanted to talk about because I was like so tired, but this is the most interesting thing. Let's take it back. In we the were Galapagos. In the Galapagos Islands. My dad was flying out and I got an email and I'm a fairly skeptical dude. And I was like, this must be bull****. But it was from a, an encrypted email address from a guy that claimed to own a diamond mine in South Africa. Wasn't it a gold mine? It was all sorts of mines, okay. but diamonds in particular. Uh, I got this email and it was big and... It looked just like a scam, pretty much. It, well, I was going to say, look legit. <laughs> <laughs> Too good to be true. I'm a sceptical guy. I was like, no way this could possibly be legit. The contents of the email I researched in with terrible internet, trying to hunt down whether this guy trying to give me $10 million, <laughs> like he was saying, was legitimate Yeah, so or not. say what the first email kind of said. Hello, I love your show. Um, Elena feels like a daughter to me and you're the type of guy that I would share a campfire with because he was from South Africa, apparently that's what they do. Um, I own a diamond mine along with several other mines. Um, I want to buy a boat and sail around the world. I'm super, super wealthy. I want to give you just a I had this idea. load of money to, yeah. to 
go to take what it is that you're doing and go bananas. He signed off with his name and then Riley called up his friend who's like clever with this stuff and was like, can you help me search this guy and see if he's real? Found his profile. Um, he did own a gold diamond mine. Oh crap, I forgot what I was gonna say. But his idea was he wanted us to actually buy a um, a big motorboat, which I was like, oh, damn. Like, I'm like, yeah. Now, he wanted us to buy a big motorboat and be a boat that, um, when there was natural disaster in places, went and helped. And I loved that idea. So that might have been email two. Email three was virtually incoherent. And I was like, oh, no. He's drunk. Then. Email four was apologies about email three. He started talking about hunting, hey? More, yeah, the, the, he, he lost me there as well, but um, it was very well written and he got me back on board. There were more promises. In the meantime, can getting, I just say? No, stop interrupting. Okay. <laughs> you, you woke me up for this story, now I'm excited. We're on the Beneteau in the Galapagos Islands with, you know, nary a penny to scrub together. We were preparing for our big Pacific crossing. The yeah, boat was I did not ready. need this extra stress. We hadn't provisioned the boat. Riley's dad had just come and he was jet lagged. Well, no, no, this was the other thing that I was going to say. So I stayed up all night trying to figure out what the hell was going on here um, and failed to meet dad at the place that I was supposed to meet him at. I slept at in. At the airport, yeah. Yeah. So I found dad sweating and he hadn't slept oh, for no. about 40 hours and I've never felt worse in my life. And the whole reason was I was getting screwed over by this buffoon. Got if you're to. watching, <laughs> you, man. Like, he ended up like getting really personal too and saying about how his kids don't like him and... Um, yeah, there was a bunch of... Struggling. Probably. When he got to that point, Riley's like, okay, this guy, I think, just wants a friend, you know, and was offering his money, and how sad is that that he, you know, uses his money to lure in people? But then maybe he, he didn't even have money and... We'll never know. Yeah. Um, so that was the first <laughs> millionaire. And that was the first time we got offered $10 million. <laughs> <laughs> How about that, though? That really is ridiculous. Second time? No, I think Can't talk about the second time? No, I think that'll do us. Whoa. Come on, the second time's hilarious. Actually, he'll definitely <laughs> be watching. That's when I was offered money to sleep with a woman. Go and on. we agreed. <laughs> and that's how we got the old Tremere. Number two for another time. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and join us next week as we sail off to another island in search of the perfect spot for some paragliding. Oh. <laughs> Tom straps us onto him and we just launch right off the ground. Wild. We'll see you guys then. <laughs> yeah.